Welcome into Drew Silly Diamond for Tuesday, October 15th, 2024. Three pack of college football coming your way, guys. Let me know in the comments below where you agree, where you disagree. Your picks for tonight. MLB, welcome as well in the comments below. Any questions, fire away. Smash that like button if you're liking the content. As we got first game up. 7.30 Eastern prime time on ESPN2, a rivalry game. Battle for the belt is what they call it in state here, between in the state of Alabama, between Troy and South Alabama. South Alabama, the Jaguars laying 12 and a half as the home favorite, 56 and a half being the total. These two rivals, they know each other. It's not far from Troy, Alabama to uh, Mobile, Alabama, which is where this game is being played. And it's one in five, Troy, 0 and 2 in conference versus 2 and 4, South Alabama. Although I do think South Alabama is a lot better than the record indicates. They lost just last week to Arkansas State, a tough one. Um, it was a game I actually bet. Um, lost on the Jaguars, but, you know, they had over 350 offensive yards, total yards, and they lost the game by two points. A couple swings went against them, turnovers. But breaking it down here, guys, actually, it's both teams off of extra prep time. That was two weeks ago. Neither team played this past weekend. In Troy, they are a team that's 0-5 against FBS competition. They really haven't played well at all. 0-5 oh, uh, oh against the spread as well. So they're a team that's dealing with a lot of injuries, they haven't gotten very good quarterback play as well. This isn't the Troy of a few years ago, you know, winning Sunbelt Conference championships. They're a team that's, you know, up against it talent-wise. They got to move the ball very slowly on offense, kind of play keep away. Not a team that I'm really looking to bet on. Now, they have a lot of preparation time here. Their last game was all the way back on October 3rd. It was a Thursday against Texas State. So they could – you know, get healthier, have have different schemes in place. It's something to watch here with Troy going forward. But overall, I just think South Alabama is the much better team. Quarterback-wise, it is a huge discrepancy here. Gio Lopez is pretty good for South Alabama. This is actually the number one rush offense in the conference, averaging over 200 yards per game. Their head coach, Major Applewhite, they'll really look to move the ball. It's also a team that has a discrepancy in when they play. They're 0-4 on Saturdays and 2-0 midweek games. You know, for whatever reason, they're taking advantage here of like the Sunbelt Conference USA playing on these weeknight games. I kind of like it, you know, as a fan, as a sports better. It gives us something to do here Tuesday night action. Now, if you're looking for negatives with the Jaguars, they are number one in penalties in the conference. They actually had 11 penalties against Arkansas State. That worked against them in the loss. I did think they were the better team in that game. Also, this is the first of three straight home games for South Alabama. Four of their first six were on the road. They had a couple paycheck games as well. You know, they got blown out by LSU. So I don't want to downgrade them too much. I think talent-wise, quarterback-wise, South Alabama is the play here. Uh, not going to be a best bet because it is a rivalry. We're having to lay 12 in the hook. But let's jump on the South Alabama Jaguars to start us off over the Troy Trojans. We'll move a half hour later on CBS Sports Network. It's Kennesaw State and Middle Tennessee State from the Conference USA. Johnny Red Floyd Stadium, Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Looks like 51, 51 and a half being the total. Anywhere from... It's mostly minus 10 here. That's Middle Tennessee State as the home favorite. There is a nine and a hook out there. Middle Tennessee State comes in one and five. Kennesaw State, 0 oh and five. So kind of a degenerate special here. But hey, it's on nationally, nationally televised game. Kennesaw State lost five games by an average of over 21 points per game. So they really haven't even been competitive. You know, they've been taking the step up from the FCS level to FBS. They're having a tough time doing that. And only five touchdowns, offensive touchdowns through the first five games. This offense is not very good. I mean, it's in the numbers, but when you watch them play, you know, it almost reminds me of kind of like a high school offense. It's not very good on the offensive side. Like their quarterback's only 5'9". They try to, they're trying to run the option. It's almost just like put your best bath, best athlete back there, see what he can do. They haven't been able to do much offensively. But the thing here is defensively. They haven't been good either. They're number 115 in the country out of, you know, 130 plus teams. So obviously it shows there on the defensive side, not being very good. The only thing here is if you're looking to lay the points with the Blue Raiders of Middle Tennessee State, 
They're even worse, worse defensively. Number 127 in the country. They have been letting up some big plays. We saw it just in their last game getting kind of blown out there against Louisiana Tech. Now, their quarterback for Middle Tennessee State, he's pretty good. Nick Vadiato is number one in Conference USA this year in passing yards. I like Middle Tennessee State here. I think they're the more talented team. They have the better offense. The problem is their defense has been so bad, and they played five days ago against Louisiana Tech, giving up all those points. Now they're coming back on a Tuesday night game. Sidewise, if you need something, I would go with Middle Tennessee State. But more so, guys, I think they score a bunch of points here. I, I, I like the over of 51. Also something on the Kennesaw State side of things. They're 0-5. And they're off of their bye week. So if you're going to make a change, now's the perfect time to do so. It's almost like a volatile handicap in that you, they, they might just change up their whole offensive scheme and go a little bit more up-tempo, take some more chances down the field. So that's something to watch here. And I actually think they do something of that nature. So getting a 51 here, both, both offenses, like we went over, just near the bottom of college football. Let's go up and over 51, Kennesaw State and MTSU. We got one game left. A reminder, wagertalk.com. It's $5 Tuesday. Got best bets up for just $5. Great day to check out the website. Got a 4% college football up. It has been good in college football. The 5-0 and weekend, Saturday and Sunday, guys. 16-6 and football run. Number one overall football handicapper at wagertalk.com by totals over the last four year totals handicapper. So, uh, hey, 16 and six overall in football. So, check that out. Just five dollars, wagertalk.com. 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific for the nightcap on Tuesday. ESPNU, another nationally televised game here, guys. It's Louisiana Tech and New Mexico State. We are seeing. Louisiana Tech, the Bulldogs, minus 10 in the hook point road favorites, 50 or 51 being the total. Tech comes in two and three on the season. New Mexico State, one and five. They have lost five straight, four, both straight up and against the spread. So uh, they've been in a little bit of a, of a skid here in Las Cruces. Of course, if you remember Diego Pavia, the quarterback for Vanderbilt, Jerry Kill, they all came from New Mexico State last year, that 10-win New Mexico State team to Vanderbilt, then, of course, beating Alabama. But it was a little bit of a talent drain, and we're seeing that this year with New Mexico State. They've already played three quarterbacks this season. None of them have been very good. Um, and they're up against Louisiana Tech here. I like Louisiana Tech. Last week, I bet a, I bet on the under and took the loss in that MTSU Louisiana Tech game. But something I've learned as a sports better is loon, lo, learn from your mistakes. And one thing I'm looking to do with Louisiana Tech is bet the overs. Their head coach, Sonny Cumbie, you know, he played quarterback, I believe, at Texas Tech. He actually relinquished his duties of calling the plays. And I thought that they would slow down a little bit, but sure enough, no, they looked really good offensively last week. They scored 48 points, so almost getting a half a hundred there. They, I think they had 41 at halftime or early in the fourth quarter. So it was something where they had a bye week the week before that. They did change things offensively and look good doing so. Um, also something to note there in that game, Louisiana Tech and Middle Tennessee State, I was watching it. One of their best defenders went out. He kind of collapsed on the uh, field, kind of a scary situation there. So they are down a little bit defensively. Overall, guys, New Mexico State, their defense, one of the worst in the country as well. They've given up over 50 points in back-to-back -back games coming into this. I think Louisiana Tech is the side. Even more so, I like the over. I think Louisiana Tech might get there by themselves. It is a tough trip. You know, going from Ruston, Louisiana to Las Cruces, New Mexico, not an easy trip by any means. And it's a short, short preparation time. They only have five days since their last game. I actually think that hurts them more defensively than offensively. I think they'll keep it going on the offensive side. And defensively, if New Mexico State can punch in a couple, hey, we'll get into the 50s and beyond, guys. So Louisiana Tech, New Mexico State up and over 50. In recap, we got Kennesaw State, Middle Tennessee State, Conference USA up and over 51. And we're on South Alabama over Troy in the Battle of the Belt. That's going to do it for the Tuesday show. Check out $5 Thursday, wagertalk.com. Smash that like button, comment below, guys. We'll be back on Wednesday. Thanks for tuning in.